aspirin, Advil, naproxen, diclofenac, and celecoxib. What do these drugs have in common? They are all anti-inflammatory drugs that can be used for treating pain. How about acetaminophen, also known as paracetamol or Tylenol? Well, acetaminophen is an analgesic and fever medication, but not an anti-inflammatory drug. Today, I'll answer some questions that people ask me. How are they different? Is one of these drugs that is better than the other ones? Can I mix these drugs? Can I use these drugs if I have high blood pressure? Are they safe for children? So today, I'll answer these questions and many others in this video. Let's talk about uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs today. First, let me start by explaining what inflammation is. It is a normal reaction of the body to any insult, trauma, attack, or infection. So if a part of your body is invaded by bacteria, for example, your body will send an army of cells to combat and kill the bacteria. This makes that part of your body to get hot, red, painful, and swollen. However, the body will always overreact, and this makes the inflammatory reaction usually much exaggerated than what is needed. The body overreacts because it is better to send more inflammatory cells to kill the intruder, the bacteria, than to take a risk of not sending enough and then that infection spreads to the whole body. But inflammation occurs not only when we have an invasion by bacteria, it also happens in autoimmune diseases or when there is a fractured bone or a ruptured tendon, and we call this tendinitis. Well, basically, anything that finishes with itis in medicine means inflammation. In the appendix, we call this appendicitis. In the brain, we call meningitis. In the throat, we call amygdalitis. In the ear, we call otitis, and so on. Therefore, the way to combat inflammation is by using anti-inflammatory drugs. There are mainly two types of anti-inflammatories, the steroidal and the non-steroidal drugs. Today, I'll talk about the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and the short form that we use for this is NSAIDs. A week ago, I posted this question to my YouTube subscribers. When you are in pain, what do you do? And 37% of you said that you take a painkiller medicine. 30% do some exercise. 17% try to distract your mind out of it. And 6% just cry and be miserable. And the remaining 9% said a variety of other things like drinking warm water, deep breathing, taking a hot shower. So, for the 37% of you who said that you take a painkiller, non-prescription medication, this video is for you. There are dozens of different types of NSAIDs. They usually are sold over the counter without a prescription, but some of them will need a physician's prescription. In another question that I posted to my subscribers, I asked which painkiller do you take? 48% of you take Tylenol, 22% take Advil, 13% take naproxen, and 10% take aspirin. The oldest anti-inflammatory medicine that we know of that has been used for more than 3,500 years is acetyl salicylic acid, or ASA. It was used by the Egyptians and ancient Sumerians who extracted it from willow bark. It was patented as aspirin in 1897 by a German manufacturer. Aspirin is an excellent anti-inflammatory drug. It helps to reduce pain and fever. However, 
It cannot be used in children younger than 12 years of age to treat fever because it can cause a serious disease, a serious reaction known as Ray's syndrome. It is rare, but it's serious. It can cause some swelling in the liver and in the brain. Aspirin has an effect in the platelets, which are the blood cells that are responsible for, responsible for the blood clots. Aspirin blocks the platelets from forming blood clots. So low dose aspirin can also be used to reduce the risk of stroke and heart attacks. However, in people with high risk of hemorrhage and bleeding, aspirin is not a good idea because there is an increased risk of bleeding, like hemorrhagic bleeding in the brain, known as hemorrhagic stroke. The maximum dose of aspirin that a person can take per day is 4,000 milligrams. So the person may take up to two tablets of 500 milligrams four times a day. Another type of NSAID is naproxen, known as Aleve or Anaprox. It is very similar to aspirin, but with a few differences. Naproxen does not block the platelets, so it cannot be used to prevent strokes and heart attacks in low doses. In fact, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, in the US warns that all non-aspirin NSAIDs may increase the risk of heart attack and stroke, and they can occur as early as the first weeks that the person is using the NSAIDs. People with high blood pressure, kidney failure, or history of heart attack should avoid taking NSAIDs, any type of NSAIDs, mainly the non-aspirin type of NSAIDs. Naproxen takes longer to start working. It usually takes 30 minutes and aspirin usually takes 15 minutes to start. But also naproxen will last longer than aspirin, so naproxen may be better for people who have chronic pain. The maximum daily dose of naproxen that a person can take is 660 milligrams per day. The tablets, they come in 220. So the person may take up to three pills a day to a maximum of 660 milligrams a day. Ibuprofen is the drug name for a variety of brands such as Motrin and Advil. The low dose tablets of 200 and 400 milligrams are available over the counter without a prescription. But the higher tablets, the ones with 800 milligrams, they usually need a doctor's prescription. The maximum dose should not exceed 2400 milligrams per day because higher doses are linked to heart attack and stroke. The main uses of ibuprofen are for fever, menstrual cramps, headaches, rheumatoid arthritis, and osteoarthritis. Diclofenac is sold as brand names as a Cambia, Voltaren, and Cataflam. This medication is not safe for people under the age of 18. Women who are thinking of getting pregnant should avoid this NSAID diclofenac because it can affect ovulation and then it's hard for them to get pregnant. But also, if they get pregnant, it can also cause serious heart or kidney problems in the unborn baby and possible complications during pregnancy. The maximum daily dose of diclofenac is 150 milligrams per day. Higher doses than this are related to heart attack and stroke. All of these NSAIDs that I mentioned before are medications that block COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes. These enzymes are involved in the inflammatory response and in the production of prostaglandins. Ideally, we don't want to block the COX-1 because it produces a substance that protects the stomach. Now, there is a special type of NSAID called COX-2 inhibitor. It's selective to the COX-2. There are few anti-inflammatories in this class that are specific to COX-2, but only one is uh, available and approved in Canada and in the US. It's called Celecoxib, and the brand name is Celebrex. 
Celecoxib is good for short-term pain relief after any trauma, like a, a muscle sprain, post-surgical pain, pain following a dental procedure. In these situations, the prescription of Celecoxib should not be for more than seven days. And the maximum daily dose that is safe of Celecoxib should not exceed 200 milligrams per day. How about headaches and migraines? Despite having many other migraine-specific drugs that are better and have bad effects, like triptans, NSAIDs are the most commonly used medications for migraines. This might be because NSAIDs are widely available, they are easy to access without a prescription, and probably less expensive than the triptans. However, Overuse of NSAIDs for migraines and headaches is associated with the persistence of these headaches, known as medication overuse headaches, or MOH. What about side effects? All NSAIDs have similar side effects. The most common are stomach pain, stomach bleeding, and ulcers. So it is advisable to take them with food, and if the person continues having stomach pain, then they use, may use some stomach protector like ranitidine, which is sold as an over-the-counter medication without a need for prescription. All NSAIDs should be avoided in the third trimester of pregnancy because they may cause pulmonary hypertension in the newborn. They may also prolong labor by inhibiting uh, uterine contractions and also may cause hemorrhage in the fetus. Elderly patients need to be carefully monitored if they're taking NSAIDs. For, even if they're taking for more than seven days, they should be carefully monitored because NSAIDs may increase blood pressure, may damage the kidneys, interfere with other blood clot medications, cause gastric or bowel bleeding, and even alter the liver function. In people who have kidney failure, we need to monitor the levels of creatinine in the blood very carefully because NSAIDs may worsen the kidney function. I could not finish this video without talking about acetaminophen, known as Tylenol or paracetamol. The brand name is Tylenol. Acetaminophen is not an anti-inflammatory drug because it does not reduce inflammation. It is an analgesic medication and also very good to reduce the temperature in case of fever, especially in children. It is safe in children. It's also a medication that helps to reduce pain like headaches and muscle aches. The main disadvantage is that there are many people who, are, who get poisoned by acetaminophen every year. In Canada, the main cause of acute liver failure is acetaminophen poisoning or toxicity. Some people will need a liver transplant or even die because of this poisoning. Most of these acetaminophen poisonings are by accident. A lot of people also don't know that they are using acetaminophen Acetaminophen is included in a lot of things like cough syrup, cold medications, mixed with anti-allergic medications over the counter, and they end up taking acetaminophen even without knowing that they are taking it. The maximum daily dose that is safe should not exceed 4,000 milligrams for adults and children over 12 years of age. This is equivalent to eight extra strength Tylenol per day each tablet contains 500 milligrams. The person could be taking two pills at a time and wait six hours before they take the next two pills. So how about mixing these drugs? It's not a good idea to mix an NSAID with another NSAID, as they do the same thing, and the person will just be adding the risk of adverse effects. However, it is possible to mix acetaminophen with NSAID because they are different classes of medications. In case of fever, for example, 
we can alternate taking Tylenol and Advil, like one tablet of Tylenol, then four hours later, a tablet of Advil, then four hours later, Tylenol, and so on. So in summary, it is not because these drugs can be bought without a prescription that they are safe. I recommend you talking to your pharmacist even before you start taking these medications or buying them. As you see, NSAIDs and acetaminophen may be harmful and lead to serious adverse effects. And please don't forget that this video is for educational purposes only. If you have a condition that needs medical advice, please talk to your doctor. And if there is an emergency, go to the nearest emergency department. Below this video, in the description, there is a link to a document that you can download and it summarizes the main content of this video. If you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up here and turn on the notifications so you get notified when I post new videos on this channel. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And there is also a share button here. You can send this video to anyone that you know that needs to hear this message. I have other videos on this channel and check here for other topics. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.